Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about what I think are the best crimpers on the market. Now, I've done a video before on these Klein Tools uh, 1005 model number crimpers, excellent crimpers made in the USA by Klein Tools, and they are excellent crimpers. But I've updated my thinking on these crimpers based on some experience I've had. Now, if you look at this crimper, you'll see that there's two parts of the die here, right? There's the non-insulated and the insulated part of this tool die. And the idea is that if you are, that, as I understand it, and feel free to correct me in the comments if I get something wrong here, but this, as I understand it, is an insulated connector, okay? And this is a non-insulated connector, right? So that's the difference in, in terms of deciding which part of that die to use. Well, what I've seen repeatedly, as everywhere I've seen, including recently on the job, is I've seen that folks have been using this non-insulated part of the die for everything they crimp, regardless of whether it's insulated or non-insulated. They, they, they end up using the non-insulated part of the die. They like this type of crimper, okay? Now, this is considered, you know, one of the best crimpers on the market. Another one that's talked about a lot is the channel lock crimpers. And basically the biggest difference between those two is this part of the die is switched. So non-insulated and insulated are alternated. So you have non-insulated back here and you have insulated over here. So if you can envision that, that's how channel lock makes them, and some people prefer one over the other. Uh, for example, this tool, the advantage is that you don't have to have the grips very far apart when you're trying to fit an insulated uh, connector in the non-insulated position, right? The grips aren't quite as far apart because we're not positioning this back here in the back of the tool. So that's one advantage of having this out here further out the, the non-insulated part of the die. So that's one advantage this tool has. One of the advantages the channel locks has is this is non-insulated one is here in the back, so it's closer to the pivot point. So there's more leverage to crimp. So it's, do you want more leverage or do you want the handles to be closer together on the crimp? So really, that's sort of the pros and cons in a nutshell between the channel lock and the Klein. So these Kleins are excellent crimpers, but I've recently updated my thinking on this crimper. Now, so recently I was helping repair a well pump that was 400 feet in the ground. And we had a master electrician on that job, a guy who's now retired, but easily been an electrician for 50 years. And he had these Klein crimpers with him and was doing some crimping, uh, uh, splice connections or splicing down the wire. And he had these crimpers, but he said he preferred to use another pair that he had, but he had to run and get them. Uh, Th these required more grip strength for him. He's getting older. Grip strength is, uh, it doesn't have the same grip strength he used to have when he was a younger man. Well, then he pulled out these crimpers here. They're made by the Thomas and Betts Company in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And they, if, if you notice on these crimpers, and they offer a couple options uh, at least, but on this particular model number, which I think we can see right here, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see it's the WT. 111-M, and I'll have a link to it in the description. But for this particular crimper, you'll notice that they have the same part here in the tool, the non-insulated part of the die, in two different locations, two different sizes. And time after time, I've seen people who, regardless of whether they're crimping insulated or non-insulated, they always use the non-insulated part of the die, right? So people who use this Klein tool I've seen repeatedly, they just go for everything they're doing, they do the non-insulated part of the crimp tool. They don't even use this part of the tool. So that's something I liked right off the bat about this Thomas and Betts crimper. The other thing I liked about it was all the grips, it looks like all of the tools this company has come in two different colors. So they have orange and black. And what I like about that is you can orient it the way you want it, right? So if you want the tool in this position, you know to always have the orange grip on top. So no matter where this is at, I can grab it and know that I need to orient it so the orange grip's on top. So it's in the position I need it on. I don't have to kind of look at it and double check myself. So just one thing to make it a little bit easier and more efficient. You'll see here they have a label on the side of the tool. They have A, B, and C, right, for different parts. And here they define, you know, what they do, right? A, Part of the crimper can do 18 or 18 to 22 gauge, uh, B can do 16 to 14, C can do 12 to 10 gauge, right? So that's how that's laid out. Now comparing this to the client, they are about, I'm going to try to illustrate this, I'm going to stand them up on end, they're about the same length. In fact, I'd say they're the identical length, right? Identical length, but you'll notice if you look at the Thomas and Betts that it's actually wider, right? It's, it's a heavier tool, and uh, the nose of itself is wider. And to me, the, where, that, where you benefit from that is you actually end up with a crimper that has a wider 
trough here to put your to do your crimp, right? You got more material that's actually going to be crimped when you go to do the uh, make the actual crimp. Really impressed with this tool. Uh, I did buy these secondhand. Uh, like I said, I'll have a link in the description. The, the cost of these has gone up. I some years ago, like two or three years ago, I think they were around forty dollars, and uh, that's gone up since. I'm not sure why, but uh, you know they do cost more now. But an excellent tool. Very heavy. Feels great in the hand. Uh, you know, these are not sticky at all. I mean, they fall right open, but they're not loose, you know, if I play with it. So excellent tool made in the USA. So I, I think this really is uh, the best option. And, you know, based on a lot more experience than I have, of course, is uh, this master electrician we were working with. All right, I'm going to illustrate real quick how these crimpers work. Now, um, I've got a connector here that I've removed the insulation from, and I am going to pop that in here and since it's so small, I'm going to put it here in the, uh, the AB crimp part of the tool. Now, one thing I want to illustrate is that when you're doing this, you might notice there's a, a split here in the connector, right? A real fine little split. I don't know if I can show that or not. I'll tilt it there. But this is actually split all the way down on the connector. And you want to put that in the, this trough part of the connector where, where I have it here at the bottom. You don't want it up here where the tooth is at. Uh, so you get your connection there, you try to center that, that part of that rolled steel down there in the bottom, and what you want to do is then just crimp down on it. You'll see here, I'll just do it here slowly, how that's going to crimp down. We can do it in a couple spots if we want. That's how, that's how the crimpers work. If we're doing insulated, it's the same process. Uh, that's another thing I like about this crimper though, is if you're, if you're doing insulated, because I think this will probably fit fine in the smaller one, you know, you have your choice really. Uh, I think it would work fine here in the, in the smaller part of the die, but you know, you could also choose to use the larger part since you have uh, an insulation on there. But that in a nutshell is how you uh, would crimp those type, style of connectors. Now one thing I want to mention is that Klein Tools does have a crimper that has the exact same die as this Thomas & Betts crimper. Uh, it's the Klein Tools model 1006. In fact, it looks very much like this 1005 model except it has black vinyl dip grips. And I'll have a link to it in the description. Uh, it won't be quite as thick across as this uh, Thomas & Betts tool is, but otherwise it has the exact same die. So if you're looking for Klein Tools and something that costs a little bit less, you can go that route. There you have it, folks. Uh, what I think is the best crimper on the market for most people, uh, the Thomas & Betts uh, model number WT111-M. Uh, excellent tool if you can get your hands on one. And uh, if you have a, another favorite or if you have any experience with Thomas & Betts, please leave a, a comment. And if you like or learn something here today, please uh, uh, like and subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video.